just take a moment and acknowledge how do you feel hearing that scripture one more time? I know we've been dwelling on it for a little bit. <laughs> and so acknowledge for a moment how you feel hearing it again. Are you in a place where you're going, oh, another Sunday, the Lord's Prayer? Or are you in a place where you are glad to receive that this morning? However you feel hearing it again, <laughs> It's good, I think, in my opinion, to hear scriptures repeated. I know we've been dwelling on this one for a while, but it helps us to hear it again and again and again so that we can even maybe be a step closer to memorizing it, to having it on our hearts, to having it in our minds, knowing that we can always turn to these words. Now, Pastor Veronica brought the concluding sermon for our Lord's Prayer series last week. And so this Sunday, we wanted to turn it over, over to some of you who have been listening and learning, coming to Bible study, hear your reflections about what you have learned about the Lord's Prayer over the course of this series. And so I'm really excited to, to hear from Louise and Sarah and Foster this morning as they share some reflections with us. Um, and before I turn it over to Louise, I just have to, it is on my heart to give a special shout out to Ruth and Jean and Bonnie. I see you. We see you. It is so good to see you this morning. And Don and Anna, we are so glad to have you with us. And Don, especially we have been in prayer for you and it is so good to see you this morning. And so after those shout outs, Louise, I want to turn it over to you to share with us your reflection on what you've learned about the Lord's Prayer. Oh, but we need you to unmute. Oh. There we go. <laughs> good morning, everyone. It's good to see you again. I really enjoy coming here each Sunday. Uh, and I miss you and it's really nice uh, to be able to come on Zoom to be with everybody. And I really thought I learned a lot from the month of sermons on the Lord's Prayer. And as Pastor Sarah just said, we hear the Lord's Prayer a lot and at my age, of course, I've heard it more than a lot of you, but I feel that there's always something more about it to learn, and that's the good part. And first, I'd like to talk about give us this day our daily bread. And you remember the sermon was called Wonder Bread. And why wonder bread? Because bread can many different things and I expanded my knowledge uh, because of Sarah that it can be food which is very important but also our needs and you know our needs change from time to time uh, and it's good to know that give us this day our daily bread could mean Give us today our daily peace or whatever need that we have at that moment. Secondly, I'd like to just talk about forgive us our trespasses or forgive us our debts. Which is it? Both, both are important, our pastor said. Well, when I was young, I thought they were the same or pretty much. And I thought it was a matter of preference. You know, some churches use trespasses, other, other churches and organizations use debts. But I also learned that years ago, the gentry used often the version with debts. And that really said something to me because I'm living in the historic triangle of Jamestown, Yorktown, and Williamsburg. And we talk often about the gentry. 
And uh, in other parts of the country, I never heard about the gentry. So who were the gentry? They were the upper class and they were people like George Washington. And here in Williamsburg, uh, we actually have the church that George Washington often uh, prayed in and worshiped in. And, you know, I could, I could picture, gee, he's, he's going to say debts. And uh, I think I really like the idea that both are important because, as we know, trespasses is referring to our sins, but debts is referring to things that we haven't done. That is, that we owe God or that we owe man. We have a debt. And uh, so I think that's terrific. And finally, I'd like to talk about thy kingdom come. Now, when I was young and even older, I thought that when I prayed about thy kingdom come, it meant that it was up, it was up to God. It wasn't up to me that the kingdom would come, that I, I didn't have any role in it. It was, it was God that was going to make this happen. But now we find that we do have a role. We can help everybody and we can help our neighbors. And how can we do this? Well, I'm sorry that you don't all have the bulletin from October 12th, but I thought I would hold it up anyway, and maybe some of you can see a little bit of it. And uh, I love I love this, and I love looking at the pictures on the cover of our bulletins. And this one, you know, reminds me of the kingdom, God's kingdom, because everybody is helping and everybody is doing something. Uh, some people are clothing the naked. Others are giving, uh, you know, a drink to those that are very thirsty. Some people are counseling the doubtful. And it's, it's great. It's, it's done like an Italian manger scene with everybody coming on uh, a mule or horseback to this wonderful place up and down the hills. And if you haven't seen the manger scene in the Art Institute, you might want to go maybe next year if you can't, you know, go this year because of, of COVID. But um, it's a beautiful, beautiful rendition. And you don't have to worry about how can we, how can we help because it's all written out here. It's just wonderful. And speaking of that, don't forget to look at your bulletin this week and look at the picture and see if you can figure out its meaning. I don't know, I guess I'm sort of childlike, but I love to see every week, you know, the picture on the cover and, and what we're going to talk about and what's the theme. And I think it's really, really nice. I don't know who finds these, whether it's Elecum, uh and if so, thank you very much, or if it's our wonderful pastors, but I, I appreciate it. So thank you, everyone, and uh, don't forget to look at the bulletin. <laughs> that was awesome, Louise. Thank you so much. Gratitude, gratitude to you for sharing. Awesome, thank you. Am I up next then? <laughs> We've actually next got some special music from Bethany and Tom, and I think Ingrid as well. Oh, Lord, 
Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So beautiful. What a blessing. And now we will hear from Sarah Foster, her reflection on the Lord's Prayer. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, as I'm sure has been said multiple times in this service um, for the past couple months, we've been looking at the Lord's Prayer, both in these services and in our Bible study. Um, I had memorized this prayer when I was in like third or fourth grade as part of our um, Sunday school, but I hadn't been really in the habit of praying it on a regular basis outside of services um, before this fall's Bible study where one of the weeks, our homework or challenge of the week was praying it three times a day. Um, I don't know about everyone else, but over the past couple of months, I've kind of been torn between two completely different um, frames of mind. On one hand, with all the protests and news happening, um, it seems like the world has been moving very fast and that um, it's impossible to keep up with everything that's happening every day. And then on the other hand, it's kind of felt like nothing has happening. Um, as I and I know most others have spent way more time close to home and at your home um, than we ever used to on a regular basis. And it's been kind of a strange or overwhelming um, feeling to have so much be happening and also feel like nothing's happening as we don't really go anywhere. Um, praying the Lord's Prayer on a more consistent basis um, during the Bible study, a few lines stuck out to me, actually a few of the same lines that seem to have stuck out to Louise. Um, the first one is the, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then immediately after that, um, give us this day our daily bread. Um, praying this prayer every day, I almost found comfort in the fact that these two lines went together in the prayer. Uh, that we are, as we are praying for God's kingdom to come here on earth, and as we were praying for greater peace and justice to be here on earth, we were also following it immediately with prayers for what we needed to make it through just today. Um, that, um, that as much as, sorry, um, I found grounding in these two words going, in these two phrases going together um, in this ancient prayer. Um, and in this time as much as felt very chaotic and also very still and silent. Um, to know that we were looking for the same things that Jesus taught his disciples to pray over a millennium ago um, and that we were praying both for a better future and to make it just through today. Wonderful. Thank you for that reflection, Sarah. Uh, we are grateful um, for sharing 
um, how from childhood uh, it has been an important prayer to to you and it is taking on new meaning and new life in the time that we are in this awkward space um, that God um, is God's kingdom is coming and God also provides our daily need. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It is time for our congregational prayer. And I want to encourage those who have never typed a need for prayer in the chat room to do so today. There's a hymn that says, is your all on the altar? Um, sometimes we keep things that stress us to ourselves um, and we don't pray about those things. We think we can handle it. We think uh, it's too minor for God to listen to. Um, but the songwriter of this particular hymn says, is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. You can only have rest and have peace and sweet rest. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest if you yield him your body and soul. And so I encourage you to type prayer concerns, those things that you've been just worried about all alone, um, share them, or if you don't want to share them in the chat, go ahead and pray uh, yourself to God, but we do want to lift up our prayers to God. I'm praying for Mary Beth, the sister of Curtis's friend Donna. Uh, Mary Beth has cervical cancer and is discussing options. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, Sarah Foster praying for her dad as he continues radiation treatment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Any other prayer requests? We are praying um, for our city um, as there has been an uptick in COVID as they projected would happen in the fall. Um, the High Park Herald had a article specifically about the rise in Hyde Park. Um, went through the different zip codes of Hyde Park and North Kenwood and Bronzeville, uh, showing the positivity rates are increasing. So I encourage you all to be safe and be careful. Don't let your guard down. Encourage your young people to um, wear a mask and be safe. And we pray God's mercy, hear our prayer about the impact of COVID-19 in our community. Um, Christina and Chris Edwards asking for prayer for high school seniors as they are applying for colleges. For our young people who are trying to understand what is happening as different milestones are happening in their lives, um, but now a pandemic has come. What does that mean for their future? God, we pray peace for our young people. Uh, praying for Catherine Williams for her grandson's fiance, who has spinal cord cysts that has to be removed, um, just lost her health coverage. Lord, in your mercy, uh, we pray um, for her. Um, Liz Pence asked for prayer for her brother, that he will find guidance and peace in his life. And there's so many who need guidance and peace. So thank you for lifting up that up, Liz. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the unemployed, uh, we pray God's mercy and grace and guidance and provision uh, for Rita's nephew who had a stroke. Lord, in your mercy, we pray healing and we pray uh, protection and guidance. Let us, let us pray. God, you are here and we feel your presence and God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for our church family that gathers every Sunday faithfully, God. Despite any technical difficulties, God, this church body is faithful. We come together, we're grateful to see one another. Our, our people are sharing today, God, from their hearts in music and in scripture and in reflection, God. We are blessed, God, and we thank you. Thank you, God, for 
the faith community of High Park Union Church, God, that gathers faithfully, God, in this, in this remote way, God, but yet and still we know, as your word says, where two or three are gathered, you are there in the midst, God. So we thank you, God, that you allow us to see one another and feel your presence, God. We pray that your spirit dwells in each and every home, that is represented here in this gathering. God, you have heard the prayers of your people, those that have been lifted in the chat and those that have lifted in our hearts. God, some are praying for healing. God, we pray your miraculous healing over your people. God, some are praying for peace and guidance. God, we pray that you give that guidance and you give peace that surpasses all understanding. God, we pray for what's happening in our nation and even in our city and even in our community with this pandemic, with COVID-19. God, we pray that you give us guidance and that you calm our spirits and that you give us rest, God, from the dreariness that some of us have from COVID-19 fatigue, God. We pray that you send us a way for our spirits to be uplifted, that you send a new song into our hearts, a new poem, some artwork, God, that you give us ways to restore our souls. And God, we lift up today together the prayer that your son Jesus taught his disciples, when he taught them to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, God, from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the glory and the power forever and ever. The people of God said, amen. We will now have a reflection uh, by Foster Pickney. Okay, good morning, friends. <laughs> um, I'm soft spoken, so I will try to project as I as I read. If you can't hear me, just start waving your hands frantically. Maybe I can speak up. Over the last four months, I've been adding a centering prayer practice to my daily routine. For all that time, the Lord's Prayer has been one of my mantras. I sit with my legs crossed and my eyes partly closed. I use the prayer to regulate my breathing and calm my mind. Repeating the Lord's Prayer several times a morning for all these months, I thought I had come to intimately know the words I recited. But these last few months during my time at Hyde Park Union Church and this sermon series has taught me is that recitation does not equal understanding. And that familiarity is not the same as intimacy. I repeated the sentences without attending to the revolutionary meaning hidden in the words. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Think about what those words truly mean. Think about all the revolutionary intention in calling forth the will of God into a world that seems hell bent on destroying itself. Every day, if you look for it, you can find evil revealing itself and the lack of regard we show for each other, the lack of care we have toward our planet, and the lack of courage we all demonstrate in our complicity with the corrupt system of being. We should especially think of the mission of Jesus as a Christ when we call for God's will to become manifest on earth. I remember another instance of Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus moves away from his sleeping friends and approaches God saying in Luke twenty two forty two, 42, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Knowing what was coming, the sacrifice he would be called to make and the pain that he would have to endure, Jesus appealed directly to his father for salvation. 
but only if that salvation serves the will of God, not his own. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, when we repeat those words we all know so well, this is the kind of mindset we should have. The unyielding faith that God is listening to our appeals, but with the humility to trust in God's will, even if we find our own needs and wants may not be sacrificed for the greater good. The next time I say the Lord's Prayer, I will linger over the words. Let them settle in my soul so that I recognize the full import of what it means to be a devoted Christian. These last few weeks have taught me to take seriously the traditions bound up in our faith and to always remember the example Jesus set for us. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Thank you, Foster, for that beautiful reflection. And to Sarah and Louise as well, to all three of you for, for sharing what you have learned. And for all of you out there who also learned something, you know, we'd love to hear from you. Shoot us an email. Tell us what you've learned through this series. We can maybe include pieces of that um, in our upcoming newsletter. It is always such a blessing, I feel, as a pastor to hear from you all and hear what our congregation, the wisdom in our congregation. We are such a beautiful body of Christ, and I am so grateful to, to hear from our members. With that, we're going to turn it over to Christina, who is going to give us, um, lead us in our time of offering and our announcements. One more selection. I'm sorry, I got too excited about yes. offering. <laughs> Bethany and Tom and Ingrid with another selection. <laughs> this one's just Thomas and I.
Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That will bless us for the rest of the week. Thank you, Bethany. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, Ingrid. Thank you. Christina, with the announcements and with offering, with offering and announcements. Pastor Veronica shared thank yous. I'm going to continue to say thank you to all who shared their music today and um, the spoken word of reflection from our three. Thank you very much um, in sharing your time and talent. And we also want to say thank you for sharing your monetary resources and continuing to do that um, to Hyde Park Union Church. Um, Liz, thank you for the screen that's here. Hopefully everybody can see it. Three, four different ways to give mail or in person to the church directly on our website, which is listed there, hpuc.org. You can choose the tab give and then also text um, all in caps, G-I-V-E, H-P-U-C to 44321. Um, and again, thank you for your continued um, giving to the church so that um, expenses and building updates and um, yeah, our bank account can grow and, and do God's work. So let's say a short prayer. God of heaven and earth, we are blessed by the many diverse ways we can worship you. We can worship you through playing of instruments and through singing hymns together. We can worship you through prayers and praise. We can worship you as we do the work of our hands with all our hearts in your name. We worship you when we are your hands and feet to others in need. And we worship you through our giving of our tithes and offerings with gladness and adoration. Amen. Now on to our announcements, which are plentiful. And as Louise encouraged us to print the uh, covering of the bulletin to reflect on, I would encourage you to print the announcement page of our bulletin as we have many, many items going on uh, remotely and in person. The uh, first one is Pi It Forward, which is October 15th through November 30th. Um, help support the local hunger programs and eat delicious pie. There is the link there to learn more. Open House Chicago has extended the um, online and in-person viewing of some facilities. You can see the website there and also speak with Kathy if you have any other questions. On Tuesdays continues our wisdom healing circle Wednesdays meditation, and on Thursdays Bible study. And again, the contacts are listed there. The next item I'd like to highlight is a Jackson Park tailgating nature bingo and walkabout. I believe this date is still to be determined, but you should let Tim know by November 20th, if you would prefer a Saturday or Sunday afternoon and his email is listed there 
Um, and again, let him know by November 20th, that date, I'm not sure if it would be that weekend, the Thanksgiving weekend, or maybe a first weekend in December. And then next Sunday, we will be reflecting on All Saints Sunday. Um, if you have someone you would like to be remembered by name during the service, please email their name, their relationship to you, and a picture if you have one available to Pastor Sarah. Um, and that will be a time of remembrance next Sunday. Um, I guess you probably would want those by Thursday at the latest. And then also a reminder, next Sunday we fall back. So you can have one extra hour of sleep. Thank you so much, Christina, for all of those announcements. There's a lot going on, many ways to be engaged with one another and as a community. So we invite you to plug in wherever you can, wherever you feel led. And we look forward to continuing to grow in our faith and discipleship together. Let's sing our closing hymn, To Do Your Will. the hymn says, and so my God, I give to you these reigning words and restless rhymes and take my life as a tribute to your endless love for humankind. So as we go forth from this space, I pray that each and every one of us feels that endless love that God has for all of God's children. May the peace of the Lord Christ be with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you from the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Go in peace. Oh, great.
is a great thing. To serve the Lord it is a great thing. To serve the Lord, walk in the light of God. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. Walk in the light of God. Oh, walk, 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 walk in the light of God. Some awesome. Come on, unmute and make some noise. Unmute. 